Dogs Doc soared Tuesday when it was announced, and the rally has kept going through today. Let's talk about it. Grover Norquist, the uh, founder of Americans for Tax Reform, still isn't happy with that deal. Also with us is Joe Labornia, the chief U.S. economist at Deutsche Bank and a CBC contributor. He says this rally is more evidence that the Republicans did exactly the right thing. Good to see you both. Welcome back to you both. Grover, I know you're disappointed, but are you surprised? Given the political climate right now in Washington, that John Boehner would allow a clean bill to be passed, or voted on at least. Well, one might have hoped that we'd get some spending restraint in the package. The president said he'd shut the government down and default before he'd allow spending restraint. On the other hand, what the president and the Democrats were asking for were spending increases attached to the debt ceiling. They wanted to hold the debt ceiling hostage for spending increases. We stopped that. We avoided that. I think it's wise for the stock market to react well to defeating the president and the Democrats' effort to attach unemployment insurance spending uh, and other spending to the debt ceiling. Joe, is this reaction about those defeats or is this reaction about the fact that we've now removed a shutdown from the time frame until the early part of next year? It's more of the latter, uh, Kelly, that at least we don't have to worry the about ceiling, that is. the politics. Yes, exactly. That this isn't really an issue. The market really uh, got conditioned back in early December when Patty Murray and uh, uh, Paul Ryan had the broad contours of the budget deal. Uh, that pretty much got people thinking the debt ceiling wouldn't be an issue. A few weeks ago, when we were really worried about emerging markets, certainly the debt ceiling was hanging over people. But I would argue only a little bit. But let's not forget Tuesday. We also heard some very uh, market-friendly comments from from Chairman Yellen. And that really, I think, is probably the story this week, is that the Fed will remain very easy for a long time. Grover, with all due respect, you're spinning this pretty good, my friend. I mean, you have to be very disappointed. You, you know, there could have been moments when they could have attacked, the Republicans could have attached some spending on Obamacare. There could have been a myriad of items that could have been attached to that bill that you would have favored in this case. And you're giving it the other side where there were other things that you feel the Democrats would have wanted. But frankly, I don't think they were worried about it in this case. They just wanted a clean bill. Let's move on and get on to the rest of the business. Okay. But here's the challenge. I agree with you. I would have loved to have seen a delay in Obamacare implementation attached to the debt ceiling or attached to anything. However, the Republicans have a 14-vote margin right now in the House of Representatives. Thirteen Republicans have never voted for a debt ceiling ever. And there are 20 who say they won't vote for one period. So it is a fiction that some people thought, well, the Republicans will attach something to the debt ceiling uh, and then the and get 218 votes for it, and it can pass the Senate, and the President will sign it. They didn't have the votes to get anything to 218 clean or attached to a good spending restraint bill. I would like to see a spending restraint measure attached to the debt ceiling, because I think the President, at the end of the day, would have to sign it, as he did in 2011. The only decent thing that's happened to the economy in the last five years was the spending restraint of the sequester. Grover, I'm just curious, because if the GOP wants to retake the White House in 2016, mm -hmm. doesn't the party have to put forward a candidate that everyone can rally around, uh, that shows whatever the view is of the GOP moving forward? Right. And, and these distractions right now, I don't know if you even call them that, they seem to reveal almost fundamental splits and important and deep splits within the party, where the only people willing to vote, for example, for raising the debt ceiling include retirees and people who went on to to leave Congress. Yeah. So do you feel as though your very presence is actually hindering the party from moving forward instead of helping? No, look, the House and the Senate candidates have a different job than the presidential uh, candidate. The Republicans have, you know, five, six governors, all of whom have tremendous records of accomplishment at the state level, all of whom have done much better with their economies than Obama's done with his or than liberal democrat governors have done with their states take a look at wisconsin and how well it's done louisiana florida texas i mean uh... you've got some real progress at the state level with republican governors the democratic governors are tanking their state economies and obama's not done as well with his as the republican led states so we have governors that have a track record of accomplishment lower taxes less regulation tort reform spending restraint union uh, abuse reduction. Uh, so I think the Republicans are in great shape. The Democrats are going to run a relative of a former president.
All right, but you know, deficits are coming down, and Joe, it, yes. to the point about spending, I mean, when are we going to get some spending uh, reductions, meaningful spending reductions? That's, you know, we, we can't keep raising the debt ceiling uh, forever, can we? Uh, well, we, we have, Bill, and we have over time, so the answer is yes. I wrote a piece today looking at, at, at government spending coming out of this recession uh, over the oh, yeah, four years ago. It's been the weakest uh, period of spending we've had, and the sequester added to that. Uh, in fact, if you look at GDP, if you look at government spending as a share of GDP, it's never been lower in the post-war period. So when we talk spending, we have to be careful. What we really are talking about are entitlement spending. We're not talking about discretionary purchases. Discretionary purchases continue to get crimped, and even though I expect them to rise this year on the back of a better economy, stronger revenues, the story Joe, really, and this is longer term, is entitlements. That's where it is, and nobody really talks about Joe, it. Joe, we got to go, but I'm real curious. You consider yourself a fiscal conservative? I do. I, I think most people so, in the market so is it, consider is it them consistent, fiscal conservative. Joe, to be a, so tell us from your point of view, is the debt ceiling something that is, you, you're saying at the one, on the one hand you're a fiscal conservative, on the other hand you're okay with raising the debt ceiling? Expl well, why the debt is ceiling is kind of a silly thing because uh, Congress agrees to appropriations every year when they do a budget or a stopgap, and then they vote in the debt ceiling. It's just pure politics. It's a way for people to sort of differentiate themselves on the budget that they effectively just passed. So to right. me, the whole process is a bit uh, anachronistic. All right. We have to go. I'd love to continue the conversation. Thank you to both for, uh, for joining us.